Good afternoon, Gus. Thanks for joining us. Just wanted to follow on with a question on the mining industry and what's making cloud computing such a topic of interest. Hi, Pat. Well, I think cloud computing is a topic of interest for uh, customers in a lot of industries. I think for the mining industry, where historically people have tended to run applications locally on site, mm. cloud computing offers mining industries the ability to consolidate those applications, host them in uh, a fewer number of central data centres and to leverage the economies and scale that um, cloud computing vendors can offer. And mining companies need to be able to take advantage of that so that they can uh, take staff off-site and consolidate them into lower cost uh, regions such as uh, capital cities rather than having them at the um, so-called coalface where the mines are. So Gus, uh, I hope you can clarify, people seem a little bit confused about what cloud computing really means. Can you help us? Okay, well maybe we start off as a baseline with the more traditional way uh, the companies have hosted the central services. So typically they have their own data centre or they use a co-located uh, facility. They buy their own assets, uh, they have to buy their own software, uh, find somewhere to operate or, or operate it themselves um, and they have to then sweat those assets and get the economies mm. of scale out of that. At the other extreme is the public cloud. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are using Google Mail or Hotmail. Um, people are probably aware of the Amazon hosting. And so these services are the other extreme. Uh, they're intended essentially for public usage. Uh, they've got some security weaknesses, but they're very cheap. So the advantage is they're very cheap, but you get standard service levels. If you want something a little bit different, you probably can't get it. Now, in between that is the concept of a private cloud, where you can go to a private cloud provider, you can ask them to provide services to meet your requirements. Uh, you may have um, uh, reliability, availability requirements, you may have security requirements. You obviously need to be able to specify them, get them designed into the solution. But the key thing is you're actually leveraging shared infrastructure, you're leveraging virtualization uh, that that private cloud provider will provide for you. Can you give us some examples of how cloud computing can address some of these mining issues? Okay, I think mining companies, uh, as with a lot of other companies, trying to standardise uh, business processes and standardising business processes that leads quite often to standardising systems and centralising those systems, reducing the number of uh, instances you've got and cloud computing really plays into that space. It enables organisations to, in many cases, standardise on a single instance of, for example, their ERP system, um, supports shared business services, supports mining companies to take people off-site that don't need to be on-site, locate them in perhaps lower cost areas. Um, so the technology that's helping organisations do that is virtualization, um, the economies of scale that the cloud computing vendors uh, can provide. And the important thing here is that to provide the in some cases, specific requirements around those ERP systems in terms of security, availability, reliability, uh, organisations need to make sure they've got um, private cloud type services um, rather than the public cloud services where they may not have uh, guarantees around SLAs. So how do miners start the journey to cloud computing? It's a great question. Um, the key to starting is to have a, a strategic vision and a, a strategic plan. Um, you, as part of that, you need to do um, an assessment of your current applications. You need to look at where the business is heading and what the key business drivers are. Um, based on that, you do a very high level architecture. And the key to moving to cloud computing is to integrate that with a sourcing strategy. And um, companies find they have to move from uh, plan, build and run their environments to plan, acquire and manage. So it involves uh, seeking out a strategic supplier, normally by an RFP, 
And instead of worrying about the component technologies, IT departments have to um, acquire uh, IT services as managed services and package them up as business services that the business can, uh, can acquire and, uh, and, and consume. Your acting chief architect at Min Metals, responsible for infrastructure strategy, and that's heavily based on cloud computing. That puts you and Min Metals at the forefront of implementing cloud for mining. Can you share what you can from that process? Okay, we at Bedrock MG are working with a couple of large Australian mining companies, uh, assisting them in planning uh, and, and actually migrating to uh, private cloud computing, so certainly not public cloud computing. And really what we've found is the sweet spot for cloud computing are those uh, applications and the systems that can be consolidated and uh, can provide support for standard processes. So, for example, uh, if an organisation standardised on SAP for ERP, it makes sense to have one implementation of it. Uh, same for email, uh, same for information management, intranet, uh, controlling security to the network. Um, those sorts of applications lend themselves to centralisation and to private cloud computing. However, mining companies are a little bit different to other organisations in that they have uh, operations in remote areas, in some cases uh, limited communications. Um, what we've found is in migrating applications to the private cloud, you have to beef up the communications. You have to have two reliable links into those sites. And there are certain applications that have to run on site for operational efficiency, safety, etc. And those applications are really not suited to private cloud computing. They have to still run on site. So we've heard of some of the benefits for the industry. How are the risks going to be managed to realise those benefits? That's a great question because uh, I guess originally we've uh, heard about a number of security issues. Um, I guess two that come to mind, uh, Dropbox being compromised. Um, and the outage that Amazon suffered. Um, so in designing uh, for moving to the cloud, you still need an architecture. Uh, you still need to think about uh, reliability, availability, backup, disaster recovery. And you can't assume just because you're moving into the cloud, all that's going to be handled for you. Uh, you still have to design and architect for that. And I think some of the uh, companies that weren't impacted by the Amazon outage had thought about that and they had uh, systems that ran across uh, two environments that were uh, relatively independent so when one of those failed uh, the other one, the other environment was able to keep running. Um, so one of the key things to do when you migrate to uh, private cloud computing is to uh, still have a good strong architecture to understand what applications are critical to the business and to architect those for high availability and mitigate the risk of uh, putting everything into one data centre in the cloud. Uh, security is also an issue and one of the benefits of migrating to uh, private cloud is that you can manage your security uh, more tightly than you can if you move to a public cloud. For example, we recommend uh, most companies continue to run their own uh, directory and domain and authentication and that that's not shared with anyone.